let's face it, there are few topics that cause more controversy, have more confusion, and are full of more myths than diet and nutrition. In this short video, I want to cut through some of those myths so you can eat well, stress free, and lose the weight that you want. In this video, I'm going to cover the truth about meal frequency, I'm going to talk about is a calorie really a calorie, and you'll learn is snacking going to help keep hunger at bay. Stay tuned. Hey, it's Dr. Levi from Wise's Road Chiropractic, and in this short video, we are going to go through three dieting myths. Myth number one, eat frequent meals to help increase your metabolic rate. This is something that has long been touted, and you'll see it written everywhere in health magazines and fitness magazines and in the general media. Eat five to six small meals a day to keep your metabolism high. Sounds really good in theory. The truth is, there's no scientific validation to it. Let's break it down so you can understand it a little bit better. Now, the truth is, each time we eat, we do increase our metabolism. And this is what is called the thermogenic effect of food. Paradoxically, we use energy to get energy from our food. So every time we eat something, it requires a certain amount of energy to digest it, that food and to store the energy from that food. The thing is, it's proportional to the amount of food we eat and it's dependent on the macronutrients of the food. So the composition of the meal that you're eating, if it's protein, carbs or fat, will influence the thermogenic effect of food. But in a really simple way to look at it, it's reliant on the quantity of food that you eat. So there's no way to trick the body by eating the same amount of food broken up into smaller meals. It's still the same amount of food, okay? So you can't trick the body into burning more calories. So for example, uh, let's look at protein here, a really simple example. If I have two pieces of chicken and they both weigh the same, for simplicity's sake, let's just assume that each of these pieces of chicken are 100 calories. Now, protein has the highest thermogenic effect of food out of the three macronutrients, and it's roughly around 20%. So, from a 100 calorie piece of chicken, it's gonna take 20 calories to break that down. That's the required amount of energy my body will use. Now, if I have 100 calories of chicken in this meal and 100 calories of chicken in this meal, it's still only 20 calories breaking down here and 20 calories here. It doesn't matter if I eat it together in one meal, in one sitting, or if I eat it a few hours apart. It's still the same amount of food and my body will only require the same amount of calories to break it down. So in this example, 20 calories, 20 calories, eaten together is 40 calories, eaten apart in two separate sittings, 20 and 20, it's still 40 calories. There is no way to trick the body by eating more frequent meals and thinking that you are increasing your metabolic rate. You cannot do that. You cannot trick the body. It is dependent on the quantity of food that you are eating, so the amount, and it is dependent on the macronutrient composition of the meal. That's, there are the only things that influence the amount of calories your body will need to break down the food, not how frequently you are consuming them. So, myth number one, you don't need to eat frequently to keep your metabolic rate high. In fact, some research is actually saying that lower meal frequency, anywhere from one to three, has actually been shown to increase metabolic rate. Myth number two, a calorie is just a calorie, and that's all that matters. It's just calories in and calories out. Well, the truth of the matter is that it's not that simple. Now, you see, we've got our three macronutrients, fat, carbohydrates, and protein. Now, for each gram of fat, it's worth nine calories. Each gram of carbohydrate, four. Each gram of protein, four. 
In the previous video, we talked about the thermogenic effect of food, how much energy is required to break down each of these macronutrients. Now, the truth of the matter is, fat requires about 1.5%, carbohydrates require about 7.5%, and protein requires about 27%. So you can clearly see that a calorie is not a calorie. If you were to round things up, you'd see that fat is still around about 9 calories per gram. Carbohydrates are still roughly around 4. But protein will be about 3.2. So it originally started off at 4. But because it requires so much energy for the body to break down, it's actually only worth 3.2 calories instead of the four. So with that revelation there, you can see that simply, if you ate the same amount of calories, but you simply ate more protein, you could actually burn more energy just by eating more protein, but the same amount of overall calories, just changing the macronutrient composition of your daily intake of food. So that's something really, really interesting and really interesting to ponder. The other cool thing about protein and what makes it really the king of all the macronutrients is out of all of them, research has also shown protein will be the most satiating, so the most satisfying and the best one to curb hunger. You don't need to be an Einstein to figure that one out. What's going to make you feel fuller? A slice of bread or a piece of steak? So there you go. When in doubt, eat more protein. And that brings us to our third and final point, the concept of snacking between meals to curb your appetite. Truth is, research doesn't support the concept of snacking even though that this is something that is recommended, um, there's no supported evidence to say that snacking actually helps reduce your appetite. From a dieting standpoint, it also makes no sense. If the goal of the diet is to reduce the amount of calories you're eating, why would you want to eat more calories by snacking? Doesn't make any sense. So if it is something that you have been doing, then look at cutting that habit out. Just go to the standard three square meals a day. That's how we used to always eat before all this nonsense of snacking came about and also these silly concepts of multiple small meals during the day to increase our metabolic rate, which you all saw in point number one is false anyway. So no need to fret about preparing a million different meals every day and stopping every two to three hours to eat. Just get back to simple standard three square meals a day. So there you have it. I hope that cuts through some of the myths and confusion and makes dieting and nutrition a little bit easier for you. So no need to fret about eating frequently throughout the day to stoke your metabolic fire. Understand that protein is a very important macronutrient out of the three and that you also don't need to snack to curb your hunger. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed that video, I'm always sharing new tips, tricks and hints about health, so be sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss out. Thanks again and speak to you soon.